Why is mainline religion so intolerant of the 12 steps? Today, Mary's back, Dr. Mike's in, and we'll talk about it. Restoring hope, open my heart to sing, taking the darkness inside, revealing your light, restoring hope. Welcome to RestoringHopeLive.com. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen to this live on XM Sirius, Channel 131, the uh, Salem Talk Station, and also across the land on the American Family Radio Network. I'm J. Michael McCoy. I'm your host, and if I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. I love this job, and I couldn't do it without you. These shows are available by podcast within the hour at RestoringHopeLive.com. And we are very thankful for our good friends in Florida, the friends from Transformations who help sponsor this program. If you've never listened to this program, this program talks about life's hurts, habits, and hangups. And this is not your grandmother's talk show. Uh, We do not use vulgar language. We do not um, uh, swear. Uh, We respect the opinions of others, but we talk about real life issues in real time. Uh, our panel today is Mary, uh, someone who has been uh, joining us here on the show, and I hope that continues beyond this week, unless she's uh, I- arrested for the murder of my other host, Dr. Michael Hartwig, <laughs> and of course, Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, who's been hanging around with me for about five years now, and we enjoy each other's company, produced on the visual side by the lovely Miss Maddie, and audio size and network syndication from Eric David. All right. We've been going through the 12 steps. I need a little more oomph in my headphones, please. Thank you. Um, we've been going through the 12 steps. Oomph between your headphones? Is that what you said? But he knew. See, he knew. Uh, okay, he you you got to have that radio lingo. Uh, okay. Um, it's kind of like when you preachers get together and you look at one of them and say, so how's that one doing? And you think uh, and you say out loud, they're going to need to double dip on baptism. <laughs> we know what you're saying. Okay. We know the judgment there. Which, by the way, the brethren do dunk three times. Three Who times does? Four. the brethren, the brethren, the brethren. brethren. It's a yeah, it's a Plymouth brethren type. There's a tradition that they dunk three times. Oh, in fact, the uh, the visual for that is is this. Yeah, because the the sign for the Baptist is just once, just once. But yeah. it's three for the brethren. It is three. Uh, we had a young lady, uh, our uh, pastor in our church this morning, talked about uh, baptism and what it meant and things like that. And we actually had a young lady come up. And he, he said, he want to get anybody wants to get baptized after the service, come on up to the waterfall. We'll baptize you. Sure enough, some 28-year-old young lady came up and was baptized. So doesn't happen very often in a Lutheran church, you know, the Lutherans. It may be the, <laughs> it, the, 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 the what does Mike say? The flesh is weak. No, no. The flesh is weak and the, and the spirit is willing. No, no. It's the flesh is weak and the Lutheran is willing. That, that's what it is. <laughs> so today we're going to wrap up this conversation. Maybe not. On the uh, 11th and 12th steps of uh, the 12 step programs, the 11th step is thought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious conflict with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will and for the power to carry that out. And then 12 is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. We tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. What's interesting is by the time someone has gotten through these steps of a 12-step program, uh, they have had a spiritual awakening. Uh, They have had a born-again experience. They have had a uh, relationship or have created a relationship with their creator. And uh, whether that creator, uh, whoever that creator may be, uh, we think that that creator is based in the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, um, and his son is Jesus Christ, and he has a Holy Spirit. You won't find that anywhere in the 12 Steps. Because when people finally get to the point in their life where they are sick and tired of being sick and tired, most usually one of the people on their I can't stand list is God. Because that person feels like they've been betrayed. 
and they've been abandoned. And if God loved me, he would have never let me become an alcoholic or in a marriage where my husband hits me or involved in such sexual deviance that may come about in my life. If there was a God, he doesn't love me anymore. And one of my favorite sayings is, in this program, you will discover that not only do you believe in God, but that God believes in you. So there has been a uh, constant conversation among the panel over this week's about, um, you would call it, uh, uh, how would you call it? I'm not even going to start to put words in your mouth. Religious intolerance? Um, well, I, you know, I think there's been, uh, you know, some conversation. If we go back to the program where we talked about step three, where it is God as you understand him, there was quite a debate how that was wrong and that wasn't okay because there is only one God and that is Jesus Christ. And just as you expressed, people come to the 12 steps very broken and a, either they think God has abandoned them or they wouldn't be in the situation they're in. Or they think that um, they have been persecuted in their own um, churches by the people who go there because they've been condemned and they've been told that, you know, they're just this horrible, sinful person. Um, or they've never had a relationship with Christ or with God. And so to even think about that is just all new and all different. And uh, Mac, you know, as coming in, um, broken and although you had a relationship and you were a person who went to church um you know that it's just really hard to imagine life without alcohol and really hard to imagine going to a god every single day and asking him to guide your life and to help you to be the person he wants you to be correct yeah i i, I was fortunate i came in i was a god guy um um i didn't have the relationship that i had with christ uh, i I don't know if I was a Christian. I don't know if I had salvation. If I lined 20 guys up that knew me before, I think it'd be a 10 and 10. And I'd probably go with the lesser of the few. I certainly don't have the relationship then that I have today. Today's amazing. Right. And the thing is, for me, that happened, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you came to 12 Steps first. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and so my point is... Um, you know, and I, I work real closely with a gal who has an amazing relationship with Christ. She goes to our church. She um, didn't have a relationship with any God before she came. And she talks about Christ today, and she attends Bible studies at the church, and she is all about Christ being her Lord and Savior. For her, it would not have happened if she didn't come to 12 Steps first. And you know, it seems, you know, we talk about if 12 steps isn't about salvation, we'll just toss it aside because it doesn't really matter. And that's not true. There's more than one way to Jesus Christ. There isn't just one way. There are different paths. Even if you want to call it coming through the back door, I could just list off, which I'm not to protect anonymity and even first names wouldn't matter, but I could list off many, many, many people it even says in our book, it talks about one who finally gave in, surrendered, was willing to do whatever he had to do, and he had found God, and so ultimately he had found himself, and he became another, a, a great member of his church. And so there is just story after story of people who come through 12 steps and get to Christ. And I felt on this program, there's been some discussion about there's only one way, and there isn't only one way to get to Christ. Pastor and Dr. Mike Hartwig, <laughs> you have the talking stick. Sweet. Yeah, now he plays the music. Now, we, now we're out <laughs> so of time. I, I, I get... <laughs> All right, so, so uh, it, 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 give me 20 seconds of what she just said. What did you hear her say? Uh, there's many ways to Christ, and to that I would agree. I mean, there's, I, there's no debate, but it is about Christ. It's not about the, any God that we, we choose. Okay. So are we still back on step three for you then? The God no, of my understanding? No, she brought it up. You guys brought that up. I just, the God of my understanding doesn't work for me. Okay. And it doesn't work for a lot of people in Christianity because Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you even said that. You said Jesus Christ. Well, and there's also another uh, text But that you changed says, what you said before. You said there's different ways. I don't disagree with what you're saying as far as there's many ways to Jesus Christ. All right, we're coming back live here on RestoringHopeLive.com. Stick around. Restoring Hope. 
Today, millions are struggling with alcohol or drug addiction. If you or people you know struggle with a chemical dependency where a substance owns you and you have other struggles such as depression, anxiety, or trauma that can often go along with it, get your freedom back and successfully transform your life from one controlled by addiction to a clean, sober, fulfilling life. Contact Transformations Treatment Center where our caring professionals will help you find your freedom. Transformations Treatment Center offers both a 12-step and a Christian 12-step program, providing healing for the mind, body, and spirit. At Transformations Treatment Center, we understand the pain. Get your freedom back. Transform your world. Addiction specialists are ready to take your call. Call now, 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. Here's Dan Celia with today's Stewardship Moment. I had a doctor friend of mine say, I've never heard you speak about stewardship of our health. If we are going to be servants of the Lord, we need to take care of ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. Well, in that context of 1 Corinthians, I'm not sure the Lord was speaking about the stewardship of our body or our health, but he does say we have received it from God and it's not our own. Our health should certainly be a part of healthy stewardship. You've just heard a stewardship moment with Dan Celia of the Regency Foundation, helping you plan, give, and invest wisely. Call them at 877-4-PLAN-WISE or log on to regencyfoundation.org. That's regencyfoundation.org. A Marriage Moment with Dr. Mike Hartwig for Marriage Matters Live. You can learn a lot for your marriages around the second law of thermodynamics. In basic layman terms, that law means that when left to ourselves, things naturally fall apart. All you have to do is look at your teenager's room and left to itself, it will definitely fall apart. So it is in our marriages. Unless a couple continually works on their marriage, it is doomed for disintegration. Left to itself, it will fail. That's why scheduling regular times to get away with just you and your spouse are so important. Those getaways can be as simple as taking a walk around the block, going away for the weekend, or attending a marriage seminar. If you want a strong, happy marriage, you got to work at it. That means spending time together, talking, and enjoying each other. This Marriage Moment and Marriage Matters Live is a ministry of Restoring Hope Live, heard Sundays on this station. Restoring Hope. Every day I wake up at 5 to give Dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at 5 to give Dad his medicine. At 6, I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at 5 to give Dad his medicine. At 6, I make his breakfast. At 7, I shower. Every day I wake up... For those caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida, has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program, Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. Learn more now at RestoringHopeLive.com. Restoring Hope. Open my heart to sing. Taking the darkness inside. Revealing your light. Restoring Hope. 19 minutes after high noon. At least that's where it is here. It's 19 minutes past the hour. And uh, you are listening to RestoringHopeLive.com on XM Cirrus Channel 131 and also on the American Family Radio Network brought to you by Transformations. You heard their ads. Uh, for heaven's sakes, if you've got somebody who's just to that point and they need to get treatment and they need to go now, call the folks at Transformations. You can find their number and contact information on our website at RestoringHopeLive.com. All right. The topic today is, uh, uh, is a good one. And it's a conversation that needs to be had. And I can't think of two better people to uh, have this conversation uh, than Mary, who's 31. 
years sober and is a, a devout uh, 12-step program person. And uh, Dr. Michael Hartwig, who is a uh, seminary uh, graduate uh, in the Baptist Church, is uh, a pastor in the Baptist Church, and also holds his doctorate degree in uh, how to make friends and influence others. <laughs> I do no. have a PhD in education. Education. Christian education. Yeah. And uh, Mike is, uh, and stop me if I put words in your mouth, but you are a uh, hardline right winger. I don't like the term hard, hard, hard right winger. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I consider you're, myself a very conservative you're person. You're a yeah, right. and you can be spit out in the middle. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, so no. we absolutely right, right. know where right. you're coming yeah, I'm from. A, I am a very traditionalist. And I, okay. yeah, I believe clearly in the Word of God. It's uh, God's Word and... Um, yeah, you don't argue against it. And you are a uh, born again Christian who follows Jesus Christ and has a uh, uh, um, a great love for the twelve step program and how it brings people to uh, their Creator in Christ. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the phones only because I trust this guy. I hope he doesn't take us down a rabbit trail. Frank, you're live on the air. What's going on? Well, uh, like me, I'm guessing Hartwig problem with this uh, program is he's probably kind of looking at it as uh, a deceptive nature that that you're you're promoting one thing but ultimately you have another goal in mind and i would liken it to what christ said that uh, you know you deny me before men i will deny you before the father and uh, i've heard a contemporary person in the media who came from a hate-filled lifestyle, utter the thought one time that whatever God makes you a better person is okay with him. Well, what if that God is Satan? So I'm guessing Hartwig probably thinks, just be up front with who you are, what you are, and ultimately it probably should have come down that this, all, the, all this stuff probably should have kept, been kept secret. <laughs> Yeah, the 12 Frank, steps. I love you, man. You're my hero today. Sweet, <laughs> Frank. Way to go. Thanks, All right, man. Frank, thank you very much. Uh, the really? I mean, he makes Frank a great point. not necessarily those of Restoring Hope Live, Mary, Mac, or anybody else in this room except <laughs> the educated Baptist I mean, well, doctor. Really, are we going to be honest with people? I mean, or, or are we not? We're going to trick them into it. Well, here, let, me, let me give you an, uh, a scenario, and I haven't thought about this, so this may fall out of my mouth wrong. But um, uh, Mary, not your Mary, I'll use Susan, this is a generic name, sure. is eight. And uh, Susan um, decided that um, she was going to uh, kiss um, uh, Karen, her little girlfriend. Right. Um, and uh, one parent says, oh, isn't that cute? A couple girls playing and, and kissing like that. And. I'll make sure I sit down with Susie and tell her that, you know, we, 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 we can kiss as friends, but we don't kiss romantically. And the other parents go off the deep end and yell lesbian. It's all about our approach. And it's all about meeting that person where they're at. On that illustration, I would agree totally with if you. If you slapped an eight-year-old girl and said, I can't believe you just did a homosexual act, that means you're a lesbian and you're a sinner, you are absolutely going about it the wrong way. You're talking about methodology. You're not talking about premise. And what that means is, is here in the 12-step program, you said it says that turn our lives over to the care of God of as we understand him. Correct. You're not saying that it's wrong for them to worship Satan in that statement. Well, no. And I, you would embrace that, too. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Maybe I need to ask you to read the book. Nowhere in the book does it talk about the dark side. Nowhere in the book does it okay. talk about the dark side. Now, hang on. So if we're talking about baby steps, we're talking about people who've come to the program and once again either never had a relationship, have a broken relationship, are mad at God. Okay, even today in my church, it was talked about, you don't beat people over the head about this. You plant the seed and then you let them get where they need to get. 12 steps will never be about salvation. And I heard you say last week that if it's not, then just toss it aside. There's the religious intolerance. Okay. okay? Let me, let me, There's the religious intolerance. If it has led as many people as I know to Christ, why do we care? You're inconsistent with, a, with the basic tenets of your own book that you're telling me to read. Because in point number one, it says, of the traditions of the 
AA traditions, you know, there's a difference between the steps and the traditions. <laughs> Thank you. But the traditions say our common welfare should come first. How can you look at somebody and say, it's okay if you believe in Buddha? And, and, and as long as you're off alcohol, you're inconsistent all the way through unless you agree, and you do personally. That's great. I, want, I think that's wonderful, is that Jesus Christ is the way out of this mess. Okay, it's but... Because the heart of the matter is, is their common welfare. You care ultimately about them. It's not just about getting them off alcohol. Right. It is about develop, them developing a relationship with a higher power. And um, if they come in believing... But what if that <laughs> higher power is not true? Okay, and not true. Best interest uh, tell me the, the... Okay, so if somebody comes in and they believe in whoever, whatever, okay? We accept them where they're at. We love them where they're at. I'm right there with you. And then you. as we've talked before, if a person is... They're going to have a spiritual experience, period. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's not even talk about with who. They're going to have a spiritual experience because left to their own devices, they can't change any of this, all right? Well, let me, let they me have to be right turned. There. They have to be turned. Just a second. So if you and I have talked before and said, do we believe if somebody is supposed to have a relationship with Christ, they're going to have it and nothing can stop them, why do we care where they come in? And nobody's worshiping the devil that I know of, okay? Nobody is worshiping the devil that I know of. And there are millions of people in 12-step that I don't know, but I do not believe that anything is going to change or get better in their life if they're worshiping the devil. Are they, do you know uh, people in your group, and I, I, I know if, um, from, from stories and things like that, are there Buddhists in 12-step programs I never ask area? anybody who their higher power is. Not my business. Then you don't really care about them. Uh, yeah, you know, well, I heard. How, how do you go there? I don't know how you go there. Are you? Do you have people standing outside your church saying, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And if they go, well, I'm not sure. And then you say, well, go away until you do. No, no, no. No. If I really care about their welfare, okay. then I'm going to be caring about where they're going to spend eternity. Is right. that true? Sure. And part of that is turning back to Jesus Christ. Right, but do you slap the eight-year-old no. girl? Oh, no, okay, not well, at all. you're slapping, at, all. at step three, no. you're slapping no. the here's, alcoholic. Here, here, there's two things I want to get out. I, I want to remember to make sure I come back because this feels amazingly like a conversation I had in seminary one time. Um, but the, the, the issue that I'm concerned about on this, and I love the AA program. I've encouraged people to go to the AA program. I think it's a great program, except that it isn't, centered on Jesus Christ. I think the issue needs to be, take that phrase out. Just take that one phrase, as a God, or you understand it, and just leave it as God. Okay. Do you know how many people and would walk out the door and I never think, come back? I think you underestimate the oh, power no, no. of Jesus Christ. No. No. Let me tell you, there I think are it's people... All about G I think it's all about presentation. I think what the illustration you gave, it's, it's all about the presentation. If you just came to me and you said, God, uh, God, and they say, which God? We just simply follow up with, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. I love you, brother. But see, you're assuming. Mary lived it for 31 years. I've lived it for four years. If you said to somebody coming in broken, alcoholic, who's trying to get one day sober, just 24 hours, just go to bed or get up without drinking, that this is about Jesus, they're going to run. Yeah, I never said Jesus. You were talking about being manipulative. How is that I, not manipulative? Because because your point, you're pushing it. In my mind, I'm saying, we're going to talk about Jesus Christ somewhere down the line. That's And that's the same thing. I'm not thing. going to in 12 steps, mm. unless. So there are some people I sponsor. Well, how can you say there that you are, don't care about There them? are some people that I sponsor that um, go to my church, and we do talk about that. Because the 12 steps is not meant for salvation. But I can't tell you how many, and you, I can't tell you how many people have gone back to their church, have a relationship with Christ, because baby steps baby steps. We just want them okay, believing okay, in so something besides themselves, okay? And and again, nowhere in this book does it tell them who that is. They don't say that it's Buddha, it's Islam, it's Muslim. They don't say that it's anything. And and okay, the perception so me... of most of the people in the world, sorry, I'll let you talk here, is that God is good. It's not a bad or an evil thing. Nobody's telling them to go to the dark side or the bad side. All right, we're up against a break. We'll come back. Mary, 31 years sober. Dr. Hartwig, um, 52 years old. Thank you. Uh, you've <laughs> never had a drink in your life? Sober. But you've never had a drink? You said sober. Oh, okay. Coming back on RestoringHopeLive.com. Restoring 
all across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program, Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. Learn more now at RestoringHopeLive.com. The Pocket Testament League presents Pocket Power. Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. Tongue-tied when it comes to witnessing? Then let God's Word do the talking for you. My local youth group will feed and hang out with the homeless downtown. Such a cosmopolitan city is a huge meeting place for people of all walks of life. And having access to God's Word would be a huge help. The truth has to be shared. Hello, this is Mike Brickley, president of the Pocket Testament League. Reading the Bible every day is so easy when you always have it with you. You won't even need a backpack. You can carry one right in your pocket. What are you waiting for? Our Women's Fellowship has sponsored a car wash to raise money, but we also want to use this opportunity to share the gospel. That will be our thank you. Praise the Lord for having these testaments available. What are you waiting for? Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. For more information, call 1-800-636-8785 or visit pocketpower.org. That's pocketpower.org. So, you know, I'm a dog, and I'm kind of new to this family, but I've noticed a trend. My humans do this thing where they go around and get all my toys and hide them in this basket, but it's always the same basket, and it's always the same place, and then they act so surprised when I find them, but I'm like, Hello? That's where you put it last time. Humans are the worst at hide-and-go-seek. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Here's Dan Celia with today's Stewardship Moment. I had a doctor friend of mine say, I've never heard you speak about stewardship of our health. If we are going to be servants of the Lord, we need to take care of ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. Well, in that context of 1 Corinthians, I'm not sure the Lord was speaking about the stewardship of our body or our health, but he does say we have received it from God and it's not our own. Our health should certainly be a part of healthy stewardship. You've just heard a stewardship moment with Dan Celia of the Regency Foundation, helping you plan, give, and invest wisely. Call them at 877-4-PLAN-WISE or log on to regencyfoundation.org. That's regencyfoundation.org. Today, millions are struggling with alcohol or drug addiction. If you or people you know struggle with a chemical dependency where a substance owns you and you have other struggles such as depression, anxiety, or trauma that can often go along with it, get your freedom back and successfully transform your life from one controlled by addiction to a clean, sober, fulfilling life. Contact Transformations Treatment Center where our caring professionals will help you find your freedom. Transformations Treatment Center offers both a 12-step and a Christian 12-step program providing healing for the mind, body, and spirit. At Transformations Treatment Center, we understand the pain. Get your freedom back. Transform your world. Addiction specialists are ready to take your call. Call now, 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. Restoring hope. Open my heart to see. Darkness inside, revealing your light, restoring hope. 26 minutes for the top of the hour on RestoringHopeLive.com. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today on XM Sirius, Channel 131, or uh, across the land on the American Family Radio Network. You can always go to RestoringHopeLive.com, go to our website, and all of our previous shows are here. And this show is about life's hurts habits, and hang-ups. And we do not walk on the eggs tenderly. We have glass on the floor, and we were, bare, we're barefoot, and we're all being bloodied. Because what we do here is we are transparent. We talk about the tough subjects. We talk about the stuff that you don't want to talk about, probably. That's okay. You don't have to talk. 
just ask God if it's okay to listen and listen to the things we talk about here. Today's show, uh, we were on the 10th and, or 11th and 12th step, and, and it, it came to our, um, it came to our um, uh, presence uh, that uh, uh, there are some people who have listened to this process of us walking through the 12 steps, and they hear uh, uh, persecution. They hear that um, um, they're being told that if you don't do it a certain way, uh, it's not going to work. And uh, in the 12-step program, um, you even get to the point where they talk about uh, the 12 steps, which, quite frankly, we have to follow almost verbatim to get to the point where we have a spiritual awakening and can remain sober. But even in that, it says, here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. Now, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Doc, but your main deal is, as a Baptist pastor, is that this God, as we understand him, is immediately taking him down the wrong road. There should be a clear understanding of who God is if someone's going to turn their will and their life over to them. Well, yeah, I think so. I, I, I really do. I think Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and I keep on falling back on that, and that... Um, I, I understand what you guys are saying is that you think that it's going to be offense. And I think I totally agree with you when you say that, why should we make this offensive to people when they're not ready for it? And I totally get that. We use that strategy all over the place in, in leading people to Jesus Christ. That's an appropriate conversation to have. You're absolutely right. I give you that. But at the heart of it, it does matter who your God is. And for you to say, it in, 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 and for this, this program to say, make a decision to turn your will over to the care of God, as you understand it, it leads me to believe it, it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I know those who are involved in this program that have a, come from a Christ basis, they don't read it that way. But that's not the way it's presented here. And that, to me, I have a problem with it. It, it. Also, this conversation, I know that what you're also saying is, is that it's a way to bring people to Jesus Christ. You want to, what I hear you saying is, is that you, get, you, you guys who are from traditional Christianity and, and all that, um, you guys ought to embrace this program because it's a great way to lead people to Jesus Christ. And to that, I do see that there's some great results in that, and there's no question. I mean, there's lots of people that have come to Jesus Christ through this program. And when I was in seminary, um, uh, one of our professors uh, uh, exposed us to <laughs> a lady who, uh, and several ladies, not uh, not an intimate way, but she he exposed us to a lady and, and, and uh, had us interview her. Uh, who used her um, prostitution as a means of winning people to Jesus Christ. And she made great arguments about how when she met a John, she could come in and they would, for a moment, uh, they would go on and, and she would sell her services, and after they were done, she would present the gospel to them. And she went on and made great arguments about how many men she was able to lead to Jesus Christ. Just because we see the result of that is a positive thing doesn't mean that the methods are 100% correct. I think this is a great program. I think it's a wonderful program. If you listen to the show, I think you ought to look into this. Except realize at the end of the day, it does matter who your God is. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, it does. But, at the be but you would agree that at the beginning of the journey, totally broken, suicidal especially got people who have a bad taste in their mouth about traditional christianity yeah, to tell them that all they need to do and i like the way you put it mary is just to and explain it the way you do turn it over to something greater than yourself in fact you talk about the set aside prayer right <clears throat> you know um this prayer has changed my life, and, and, and we've talked about, you know, in here, once again, if somebody is supposed to have a relationship with Christ, they will. Nothing can stop that. That's how powerful our God is. Um, also, um, <coughs> I forgot my thought there, sorry. Um, but that, that's a big thought, what you just said. I mean, that's yeah. huge, is if we really trust in Jesus Christ, and we really, then I, you could also spin that the other side, is if they... God is going to work in their life. It doesn't matter what you say on right. this point. Well, but my argument would be, it doesn't matter what you say on that point. You should be able to say, it comes down to Jesus Christ, and they're going to come and follow Jesus Christ regardless. I can go to a 12-step meeting, and I can call God, my God as I understand him, Christ, if I want to. Okay, I mean, But I will never, capital, bold, 
72 font. Wow. That's use big. the 12 steps to bring people to Christ. It's not what it's for. It's not what it's meant for. I will respect what the 12 steps are and those traditions you were reading off to me. What they are is that my only thing, my purpose, when I first came was to stay sober and get my life together. Right. And it still is today. It helps me every time I go to a meeting. But more importantly today is to help others to achieve sobriety oh. in a relationship with a higher power. So what you're saying then is, is you care for people. I know where you're going. We had that in our sermon today. If you decide to go to the church, you, ca- you care, you care for-, for people, you talk to them about the good news. I understand that and I get that. So you only care for people up to a point of getting them sober. I care enough for people to bring them through the program, to bring them through the steps so they have a spiritual awakening, they have a spiritual transformation, and I leave the results up to Christ. If they're to have a relationship with Christ, they will find that. And if they're not, you know, I don't know why. Why do some people not come to Christ? I don't know the answer to that, and that's probably another discussion for another day, okay? Let me just say the set-aside prayer sure. here, okay, that, that has helped so much. And it says, God, and you can put Jesus in here if you want, please set aside everything that I think I know about myself, my brokenness, my spiritual path, and you, God, for an open mind and a new experience of myself, my brokenness, my spiritual path, and especially you, God. What that prayer is saying, I'm going right to the source. I'm not asking for the relationship that my... Um, religious teachings taught me. I'm not asking for a relationship that my parents told me. I'm not asking for a relationship that I think I should have. I'm going to the source and saying, I'm broken. And please help me to have an open mind because maybe, just maybe, my old ideas aren't right. And maybe what God, Jesus, wants me to have is a whole new experience and a whole new relationship. This prayer has changed my life. One of the things um, that it strikes me as there are some people that use this program and it, to, to get people to, uh, to encourage people, alcoholics, drinkers, to the point where they're free of the a- alcohol so that somebody else can come in and lead them to Jesus Christ. I sense that that's where you are. You don't like, you, you're, you're, you're kind of like an emergency room attendant where you, your job is to just get them stable so somebody can come in and follow them up and and, and give them the life-giving thing. And I don't mean to say that you don't care about people, because I know you, you you do have an amazing care for people. But then for you to say, well, you're so judgmental that you, you don't care for people, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's fair either. Well, my point in this whole thing, and I think it, in many ways I, I agree with you, it's a minor point, we, why we've beaten this. But on the, when, you, when you peel it back, to me, it's all about Jesus Christ. Cause I'm a, and I think you would agree with this. I don't, tell me if I'm wrong. But if it comes to the choice of sending someone to a Christless eternity and them being sober, Christ, without Christ, spending eternity in hell, but they're sober while they're here in this life, or whether they're an alcoholic and they've come to know Jesus Christ, I choose the latter every single time. I understand that. <clears throat> and the way I came to Christ was baby steps through the 12 steps. And I was led there. Okay, right. I don't know why. Right. Okay, I was led there. Right. And once again, I say to you... You were led there by I'm, someone in the 12-step program? No, because of my relationship, how it developed. Mm-hmm. I went back to my church. Right. And so I got that relationship, okay? Now, once again, I say to you, I trust that if these people who are having a spiritual awakening, a spiritual transformation are supposed to have a relationship with Christ. That will happen. It might be through me. It might be through their church. It might be through somebody else. But I am not led when I am working with people to talk to them about Christ. And I am respecting the 12 steps. Okay? No, can I, can, can I change say, what you're saying for just and see if you okay. would agree with this and say, at this point I haven't been led, but I'm certainly open to it as God leads me. I, through 12 steps, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That that would be breaking oh. all the traditions, and it would be breaking— I would. No, how, how can you say that? Because, because the traditions are, and, and the program is more than the traditions. The program is 
what step three says. I don't ask people who their higher power is. I sponsor a gal who has an amazing life, an amazing program. I but don't the know, tradition I don't says know that you who her higher welfare. power is. The, the number I know, one is I know. the highest welfare. I know, but the program also says that I can choose my own conception. And I can tell you, and you know, and, to, and, and what really upsets me is when people think that the program or the book is from the dark side and not from the God that we all believe in in this room. There is no way you can look through that book right. and not see that everything points to God. And again, I don't know anybody that has a God from the dark side. There may be. I don't know them. Well, there's atheists that are in, involved in AA. Right, and their, right higher power, their higher power might be the group. Right. Are you looking for the spiritual experience, or what are you looking for, Mac? No, book? no, okay. I'm looking for something else. Okay, sorry. Um, so Our common welfare should come first. And I think if you take that... And what, then, what, then what does it say? Uh, AA is, depends on uh, the unity personal of... Personal recovery depends on AA unity. Right. And AA unity is that you can choose your own higher power. Unity... We have... If you go down, there's no opinion on outside issues, okay? You know, that we don't go there, all right? It's <laughs> not what the program <laughs> is. And my understanding of this and where this whole thing was developed is there was some controversy way back when, and there was a guy who was right there. It's all about Jesus from Christ. from the Oxford giving right, group, right, which was a religious organization. Right, right, And they brought that all together, and there was that competition. They realized that there was going to yeah. be some competition between... Do, it. So I understand it, but... And I understand the tension... And where I would fall out is, is on the Oxford side, where they would come back and they say, no, it does revolve around Jesus Christ. And I think that's where some of the other things have come about. And that well, let is me like, tell you, if I have, do I have time here to have a few minutes? Oh, yeah. I take a break? Okay. So let me tell you, as I shared with Mac before the radio program, I have a friend who was raised in very fundamentalist right. Christian church, who felt persecuted at every level, who... Uh, alcoholic did her years of drinking all of that now do you think i think that that's right what's right You're, that she was treated this way as persecuted no and, okay. i don't know but it was, <laughs> i don't think you are a persecutor and you were persecute people i think there's an intolerance okay let me just share the story okay mm -hmm. so she goes back to her church after x amount of years in 12 step and she's in church with her family it's small town iowa and she's sitting next to her father in church and the pastor is talking about um people the flock that falls away from the church right and he says in front of of the congregation during his sermon let's just call him john well john you know how that is your daughter's done that oh man okay right and 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 she's been told that her um her 12-step program is a cult it's bad it's from right. the devil right bad 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 right. girl bad woman bad oh you are bad 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 okay she has an amazing relationship with the holy spirit today that she acquired through the 12 steps she listened to the program last week she did not sleep sunday night because she felt persecuted one more time because she went to 12 steps and found an amazing relationship with the higher power. And that makes me cry. Sure. That the religious people put down somebody who has an amazing relationship with the Holy Spirit because it's not their way. I don't think I would put down anybody. I don't know. Last week, I mean, I, when, when, when know, Herb I, didn't tell you I, who he believed in, all of a sudden you are tossing the program aside. You yeah, are tossing toss the program aside because he said their higher power could be anybody. Once again, you come here, it's baby steps. Let me ask and you maybe, this. How intolerant would it be if I said, oh, go ahead. It's okay if you believe in your Buddhist ways. You know what? I don't ask people again because it's Do not my business. Will? we'll ask them? Yeah. Possibly. Again, I don't know no, who's supposed to have a relationship with Christ and who isn't. I am not. Nobody on this earth knows that. For we me have to not leave to that up to Christ to decide and, and who comes is, to him and not. And who is God going to use? I don't know. He's going to use you and me to bring people. And if we don't say things, and if we that is that is like watching my son walk across the street, and because I don't want to be accused of being intolerant, I don't warn him of walking out in front of the truck it's that's about to hit it's, him. It's about loving people where they oh, are. I Again, love my son. It's about and if loving I love my people son, where they are. If I love my son, I'm going to tell him, no, that's wrong. You're going down the wrong path. I get and it. for that, some people are going to feel like they're being persecuted. I feel persecuted right now. I feel like you disagree with me. I feel like you hate my guts. I don't hate guts. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. what was me? I feel like this is going to drive me to tears. Yeah, you're being a little I mean, you sarcastic. see how ridiculous? Yeah, no, of course. Right. But you see how ridiculous that is. Anytime you say you, I disagree with you, there's a natural flavoring that comes up that says, well, you're, and we naturally run to, well, you're being judgmental. Huh. You're being intolerant. 
You know, even today in my church, the subject was, when's the last time you talked to somebody about Christ? Okay, that was the subject, okay? Right. And the subject also was, you don't beat him over the head. And he used a video example of some guy taking right. another guy and just slamming his head into a, a tub of water because he was going to do it his way or there was going to be no way. And my point is, we don't know. None of us has talked to Christ, literally, to know on this earth, to know what he's okay with and what he isn't okay with as far as how they get there. And that's my point. To put so much religious rights, so much fundamental religion churches put down the 12 steps because it is not their way. And I can, again, for how many times have I said it in this program, could give you a list of names, I don't know how long, of people who have gone back to their church, who've gotten a relationship with Christ, who have an amazing relationship with Christ because they came to 12 steps first and got their brokenness healed, and then it just took them where it took them. I'm one of them. I, I, I don't, the only thing I disagree with is, I th- and again, I reiterate this, I think the 12 step program is a wonderful program. I would encourage people to go to it. Um, I, the thing I, I, the problem I have is when you say God of my understanding, I don't think that's right. I just, I flat out think that's right, wrong. I think how we carry it out is tremendously important. I think you're absolutely right it, from the standpoint that how we address it is crucial. And that is if we come across as we don't care about people, then it's going to be a problem. But and, the fact and is, you're if going I, to have people crying and upset and walking out. And if all I kind come of. in and I'm willing to go to any length to get sober, meaning I'm willing to believe in a power greater than myself, does that not open the door? Does that yeah. not open the door to where they're willing to believe? And so then yeah. Christ can have Don't his way that. with them. Yeah, I agree with they're you. They're out of self will. Yeah. Okay, they're out of self-will, and they're trying to be into God's will. Okay, now just a second, I'll let you finish here. But let me finish, I'll let you talk. Yeah, right. But if, they're, if they are allowing themselves to be led by God's will, then how do I know Christ isn't going to use that open-door opportunity right. to reach them through whoever? And I don't know who it is. But okay? I could also say the same thing to say, come back around and say, well, why are you afraid to say Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? I'm not and afraid to say in a because meeting. Because if, if God I, is going to open their door, and God's going to work anyway... Why are we afraid to say that to them? And I and I, it's okay for me to say in a meeting, yeah. my higher power, whom I choose to call Christ. It is right. okay for me to say right. that in a meeting, all right? And if they want what I have, they may come to me and ask me, all right? But I don't discuss higher powers on a regular basis because you know what? It's not my business. Boy, I disagree with that, too. I think it is your business if you, if, if. You buy into first tradition. The door is being opened. The door is being opened because if they've become willing to do anything, go to any length to get sober, and they are believing in a higher power and trying to do God's will, whoever that God is, once again, the door has been opened and Christ can have his way with them if he wants to. At the risk of sounding intolerant and uh, uncompassionate, I would say that you only care for people up to a point. So be it. Our uh, 12 traditions... Um, are kind of the constitution of our group. <clears throat> and uh, number two uh, is always the one that I go back to. And that is for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, the loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. Anything wrong with that, Mike? Hugely wrong. Why? For our it goes group con- it because purpose. it goes contrary to what the scriptures have to say. Where? Jesus Christ is God revealed, not the group. Okay, well, but there's no group here. It says... As he may express himself in our group conscience. Right. As our... Well, it, it's our group. The group is what's important here. For our... I don't think... Hold on. Let me read it again, please. Are okay, you looking if, at it? Yeah, yeah okay. sure am. So For our group purpose. So in other words, in this group... There is but one ultimate loving authority, and that is God. Okay? Nothing wrong at that point, right? That's God. Right. Nothing there's wrong. no Buddha. There's no devil. No, there's no. God. And he may express himself in our group conscience. In other words, we may talk about him. The, the question I would have is, is how does God express himself? He doesn't express himself through the group. Oh, that is so not true. That yeah, is that so really not true. true. I encourage you to go to five... And I would encourage you, meetings. I would encourage you to say, take a look at what the scriptures have to say, and the scriptures say that God reveals Contempt Himself. Contempt prior to in, investigation. In 
that he inge- he in, he he expresses himself through Jesus Christ. He doesn't because it, he the, expresses himself through the Holy Spirit too. God is he expresses himself. Jesus through the Christ Holy Spirit. says, "I've I I am the revelation of God." Right, and so is the Holy Spirit. But it's not the group. It's not the group. Where do you... Because it says the loving God makes as he may express himself in group consciousness. Okay, that means that God comes into our group and expresses himself. And how do you know... On a regular basis. And and how do you know... And how do you know what the group... Let's say the whole group says, hey, I think we all ought to have uh, a pizza. What does that have to do with God? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the group decides. I'm trying to think of a bad example. It's probably the, the worst one I can think of. The group decides there's one ultimate loving God. And that's the Authority. guy. It's a loving right. guy. It just makes me feel uncomfortable when you uh, when you take a look at what happened with Elijah and Mount Carmel and how the group all decided that it was Baal that was going to uh, take on Elijah. And Elijah said, well, let's have a little test here. And the group all got together and said, no, you're wrong. Let's have a little thing. And they were cutting themselves, asking and begging their group, God, to ask for fire to come down. And Elijah said, oh, yeah, well, let's see. And he simply made a prayer and um, um, poured water on on all the the thing, and the fire came down from hell, heaven. And you say, well, if that was an AA group, well, the group would have had God revealed in that, and the group said that he was the one that was right, and the Baal worshipers were right. Well, clearly, it doesn't matter what the group says. You don't know what to do with that, do you? Uh, you're not you're not interpreting it correct. You you really aren't, Mike. You're not. I mean the. the the, the, the second tradition says there is one ultimate authority, a loving God. And he, that God, may express himself in our group conscious. In other words, what this says is we talk about God. That, that's all it says. Right, okay. That uh, God may express himself in our group conscious. Uh, okay, yeah, now, yeah, I, I don't have a problem. He may express himself in our group. Yeah, in our group conscious. But we have to realize that there may be some mistakes in that group, in the way that we interpret that. Think there's any mistakes in your congregation today? Yeah, of course. Okay. And we recognize that. And so by you standing up, pounding uh, over and over and over where they're uh, wrong, how many of those people you think are going to come back next week? Well, typically, we don't do that. Well, that's what you're doing today. You're, you're, you're coming down you're, you're coming down on the pinpoint, the, the head of a pin saying, yeah. if it doesn't say Jesus, it's all messed up. Right? Your words, not mine. I, I don't think it's my words. I, I, prove me wrong in the scriptures where it, where it says it can come down from anywhere. It, is, it does come down to Jesus Christ. Well, um, is I, your eternity based... On what the group says or what Jesus Christ has to well, say? Well, you know what that answer is. Of course it's Jesus. But do you stand outside your church and say, if you don't believe in Jesus, you can't come in? I, no. Well, but I you're, never telling, said I did. you're telling no, us. No, not, not true. Okay. Um, I, I want to uh, wanna thank Mary for coming in, and this has been emotional for her, and I hope she returns. Um, I also want to uh, uh, pick up her challenge. Uh, Mike, I challenge you as a brother to go to some AA meetings. And so the Holy Spirit can work within you and show you these people that have been led to Jesus I believe that would have in never gotten program. there if they had followed you. That makes no sense at all. No, because then go to an AA meeting. Well, well, okay. What do I do with the guys that I've sent to AA? Have you talked to them lately? Yeah. And, and did I talked they to them. Yeah, talk, of course, I know it works. Okay. But so you wouldn't change it then? I would no, I it. I changed it. Uh, We'll be back next Sunday live here at RestoringHopeLive.com. Check us out. Send us a message. I'd really love to hear your input.